call to order the workshop session for the Common Council meeting November 19, 2019 at 5 p.m. Clerk call roll. Council Member Williams. Councilman Williams is excused this evening. Council Member Bamanto. Here. Council Member Heenan. Here. Council Member Civiletto. Here. And Council Member Light for Washington. Present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since this is a workshop, we'll skip over certification of the prior meetings, reading of the privilege of the floor and privilege of the floor. We'll begin with communications from the mayor, including disapproval messages. Mayor? No. no? Communications from the public and petitions. Number one. Notice of claim from Verizon for damages done to a cable allegedly caused when the city of Dunkirk was doing work on Lucas Avenue on October 22nd, 2019. I will be <coughs> seeking a motion to refer this to the law department. Councilman Vamonto with the first. Also. Councilman Civiletto with the second. Number two. Notice of claim from Nancy Naparowski for injuries that occurred when she allegedly tripped and fell in front of 625 Central Avenue on October 29, 2019 at approximately 4.30 p.m. I'll be looking for a motion to refer this to the Law Department. First. Councilman Bumanto with the first. Councilman Civiletto with the second. Number three. Communication from Dane McGill in opposition of resolution number 93-2019. Uh, any discussion amongst council? Seeing none, this communication will be received and filed. Number four. Communications from Stephen Reese on behalf of Revitalized Dunkirk for permission to provide a hydration station for the benefit of the participants in the annual Memorial Day Parade. Any discussion, Council? Um, is it Randy, do we need to give him, do we need to vote on this to give him permission or is this just a received and filed? I don't even know who the department head is that I, or should it just be a received and filed? Because they did it in Washington Park. Right? <laughs> received and filed it is. Okay. <laughs> um, reports of standing committees, boards, and commissions. Councilman Mamano? Nothing. Councilman Civiletto? No. Councilman Heenan? Zero. Thank you. No unfinished business. Number nine, pre filed resolutions. 97 resolution for a submission of fiscal year 2018 consolidated annual performance and evaluation report for City of Dunkirk CDBG program to HUD. Any discussion, Council? <coughs> Would you like to comment on it? Either of you guys? No. Um, nope, just an annual action plan update. Or, I mean, not What's action plan, annual, annual performance report. Sorry. <laughs> You want me to call on you during the council meeting? Either of you or no? Sure. <laughs> if anyone has specific questions, I have. Okay. Um, 98? Yep. Resolution for approval of New York State DEC grant application for urban forestry tree service tree maintenance program. Any discussion, council? Number 99? <laughs> Resolution authorizing shared services agreement extension police services town of Dunkirk. Any discussion, council? Chief, anything you'd like to add? Okay. Would you like to comment during the actual meeting? Or? <laughs> Any new business or walk-ins? <laughs> Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Romanzo, second. Sure. Councilman Heenan. Clerk, call a roll for adjournment. Council Member Bumanto. Aye. Council Member Heenan. Aye. Council Member Civiletto. Aye. Council Member Elijah Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. And I will say this on air. See what happens when Don doesn't show up. More quickly. Oh, this is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Switch. First off, we'd like to see. Oh, this is a crack. But, um, Call to order. Call to order the City of Dunkirk Common Council meeting for November 19th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Williams. 
Uh, Councilman Williams is excused this evening. Councilmember Bomanto? Here. Councilmember Heenan? Here. Councilmember Civiletto? Here. Councilmember Elijah Bawashi? Present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Assessor Malechko is also excused from the meeting this evening. Certification of the prior meetings. This is to certify that an, that an official copy of the minutes of the Common Council meeting on Wednesday, November 6, 2019 was presented to the mayor on Wednesday, November 13, 2019. Pursuant to section 3.03 of the Dunkirk City Charter, all items presented to the mayor are now in full force and effect. In witness whereof I have hereto set my hand and the seal of the city of Dunkirk, New York, this 19th day of November, 2019. Need a motion dispensing with the reading of the minutes? First. Councilman Momonto with the first. I'll second. Councilman Civiletto with the second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Bamanto? Aye. Councilmember Heenan? Aye. Councilmember Civiletto? Aye. Councilmember at Large Vawashi? Aye. Reading of the privilege of the floor regulations. The privilege of the floor shall be extended to any person appearing for themselves, in which case that individual shall be limited to three minutes, or to any person representing a group who shall be limited to five minutes. When recognized, please stand and state your name and address. The city clerk shall have the duty of maintaining such time limits and the councilman at large may determine in his discretion whether individuals are speaking for themselves or representing groups. Councilman at large motion shall make good, maintain good order and may require any speaker to cease speaking if remarks are made in bad taste or are slanderous or non germane to any action taken or contemplated by council. The time limit specified shall be strictly adhered to except that a speaker may be allowed to complete a statement or thought started before such time has expired. Reading of the privilege of the floor regulations is complete. Um, just to add to it, if anybody wishes to come to the podium, uh, please state your name and address. If you do choose to ask someone questions, um, it is not a question and answer period. However, I will jot down your questions and I will ask them during my portion of the reports of standing committees, boards, and commissions to make sure that your questions do get answered. Um, but the privilege of the floor is not a question and answer period. With that being said, privilege of the floor is now open. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name and address. Good evening, my name is Steve Reese, uh, 433 Dove Street, in the city of Dunkirk. I'm here tonight representing Revitalize Dunkirk. Uh, I'm here to support Revitalize Dunkirk's request for council's approval of the proposed hydration station to be located in Washington Park following the annual Memorial Day Parade. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last year's event was universally well received by parade participants who took advantage of some 150 juice boxes, some 300 or more rocket pops, and several gallons of ice water provided free of charge by revitalized Dunkirk volunteers. We anticipate that we can provide an equal or greater amount of such hospitality this year at no cost to the city or March participants. As stated in the request, Revitalized Dunkirk can now show proof of insurance prior to the event. We earnestly seek your approval of this community-oriented event. In another matter before council this evening, Revitalized Dunkirk and its members look forward to the opportunity to assist the city with the tree planting and maintenance projects that are the subject of Resolution 98. Revitalized Dunkirk has already communicated its support of this grant proposal to the city development office, and we urge Council's approval. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Reese. Anybody else wishing to speak, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address. My name is Danny McGill, 111 Sisson Street, Ward 1, District 1. Saw my name in the paper today and I thought I'd attend because uh, it involves a communication that I sent an uh, email to the council and the city clerk and mayor. Uh, including my uh, disapproval of the uh, current uh, franchise agreement for the cable board. Um, my objection to the recent approval of that cable agreement with Spectrum had to do with various common sense questions. Uh, it does seem like things are different from when I negotiated the agreement the last one, last time. That's the agreement they're currently working on. Um, I'd like to know basically, and. I got a call from Chip Rewalt from the Fredonia uh, Access, 
you wanted to know when we first saw that you approved the cable agreement, wanted you to know what was in it. And I said, I have no idea. That's the first I ever heard of it. So I'd like to know how this was negotiated. Uh, was there input from the public as to what they wanted or requested? Uh, is there still a cable board? Usually that stuff comes from, recommendations comes from the cable board and uh, various comments. And the big question I have is why 15 years? What'd you get in return for that? Usually you get something, usually the agreement's like 10 years. And um, if you want another five, five years, then you gotta get something out of it. I negotiated when I did that years ago, it was a 10 year agreement and we got $50,000 for the public ass, access channel. I don't see anything in the, uh, the uh, agreement uh, for, for anything for the uh, public access channel. Yes, there was a public hearing, but how can the public comment if they don't know what's in it? I had to go back to uh, minutes of the uh, 15th of October meeting to find out what it is, and it looks like it's just standard off-the-cuff stuff uh, that you would normally agree to anyway. But there seems to be no negotiations like I had to go through. I didn't have to go through it, but I mean, it was for the benefit of the city. And uh, it doesn't show anything on what we were getting. Um, and like I said, the folks from the Village of Fredonia Public Access called me at 8 a.m., <laughs> got me out of bed, were curious as to what we got, and I had to tell them I had no idea. It was the news to me. They have been negotiating for several years. So this administration has prided itself on transparency, which is good. Yet, courtesy the public has not been prevailed. One would think you'd survey the public to find out what it wants, its wants and needs, and when the agreement is reached, you would publicize it. There was nothing that I, I stand corrected if there was, there was nothing in the paper whatsoever, or on the radio, that the franchise agreement was uh, imminent. That's three minutes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> if you would want to wrap it up, Danny, please. Yeah, I Thank will. Thank you. I think I made my point, it's just that, uh, there are things that uh, you know, upset me as, as one who served on the cable board for 30 years. And uh, it doesn't seem like the cable board, if there still is a cable board, that they were not involved with this, nor was the public. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGill. I know uh, all the cable issues in the city, Dunkirk, have been a passion of yours for decades, actually, that I, as far back as I can remember. Um, so what I'm going to have, I wrote down the four questions you asked, and I'm going to have our city attorney answer those four questions during my portion of the meeting for you. Hopefully it'll shed some light. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak during privilege of the floor? <clears throat> Please step forward and state your name and address. Nancy Nichols, 212 Lincoln Avenue. I noticed the city's been putting up all their um, a lack of words, holiday lights on the poles. They're gonna continue from Central Avenue to Brigham Road on Lakeshore Drive. I'm sure all those businesses along that area would be just more than happy to see some um, brightness come. You come down Brigham Road and make the right on to Lakeshore Drive. It's very dead till you get to Central Avenue, then everything is uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I thought and it was addressed a, several years ago that you could do every other poll with a light to spread them out a little bit in the city. Then there was a question about um, poles not being correctly wired to accommodate those fixtures. I don't know about that. And also, uh, yesterday I noticed, yesterday afternoon, uh, 1, one thirty, on my many trips up and down uh, Lakeshore Drive that uh, there were many city employees that were um, partaking in a, going into a liquid refreshment establishment on Lakeshore Drive. I just wonder if they were on the payroll. Thank you, Ms. Nichols. I'll ask Randy um, to answer any questions about the number of Christmas lights and the frequency and things of that nature when it comes to that portion of the meeting. Anybody else wishing to speak, privilege of the floor, please step forward to the podium, state your name and address. Last opportunity, anybody else wishing to speak during privilege of the floor, please step forward to the podium, state your name and address. Seeing none, privilege of the floor is now closed. Communications from the mayor, including disapproval messages. Mayor? 
Mr. Chairman, I just have one announcement and an update for Council. Uh, before I go there, I would like to wish Council and all of our community residents a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I would like to have our DPW Director give an update on our lake wall. along with uh, Development Director uh, Worcester and um, I usually this loud the uh, uh, Fiscal Affairs Officer Beach we toured uh, the damaged facilities on the westerly side of, uh, of Central Avenue uh, there, um, we're asking uh, FEMA to help us rebuild that, that wall is leaning a little bit more than it used to uh, after that storm. And the abandoned marina fixtures are much more twisted and turned than they used to be. So there could be some funds. Um, I know that the council and mayor worked together uh, with the county uh, to fix and, and to re retain the wall behind the water plant about 19. I'm sorry about 2014 2015 and that same design was recommended to stabilize the rest of the 2,000 feet of the wall behind Memorial Park uh, so after we looked at that the three of us on behalf of the mayor uh, we moved over to Lakeshore Boulevard and we didn't have to do much explaining over there we had 4,000 feet of damage to the railing portion on the, of the bikeway slash pedestrian walkway the uh, retaining wall is fine but the uh, railing portion the entire 4,000 feet has been knocked off its foundation and so what we've done while we're studying the funding to get that rebuilt is we've made it safe um, under the direction of county emergency services we put Jersey barriers for 860 feet along that area. We've had a lot of dead ends. I worked with both Chief Ortolano and Chief Edwards to make sure the, st the area is still safe. But you'll notice that there are, are new uh, yellow green fluorescent signs there to tell people to keep away from that wall without the railing there is dangerous. We don't want anybody. Fortunately, during the event on Halloween evening, no one was injured, knock on wood. Um, we don't want anybody getting injured. As it starts to freeze, it can become even more dangerous. So please obey the signs. At the bottom of the signs, it says police enforced. So the police have the authority to tell people, please stay back. Um, if they continue to do that, the police have can step it up a little bit. We don't want that to happen. We don't, and it's for people's safety. But back to the... Uh, the meeting today, uh, we met with federal, state, and county emergency uh, funding officials. I think the meeting went pretty well. Uh, they, uh, they clearly understood our issue and understood it was unique um, to this particular region. Um, there were, there's some damage in, in Sunset Bay and even more extensive damage up in the Buffalo area. But uh, we were hopeful that we can get some assistance uh, to rebuild that. And the numbers are quite extensive to do that. We've also asked for uh, funding to build uh, protective breakwaters, um, like Presque Isle has, that the Corps of Engineers built, that would protect that lake wall and keep uh, water, the waves, from coming up over it. We could keep Lake Boulevard open all year round safely if we had those constructed. So it's been a plan um, that we've worked at. I know Councilman Wallison was on the council at the time. Councilman Vandenberg was at the council at the time when we worked on trying to get those. We think we're back on trying to, trying to do that. So uh, it's a good idea, good meeting. We'll see, how, we'll see how it works out. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to have uh, an announcement made by our uh, development director. Saturday, November 30th, will be the Small Business Saturday event at the DNF Plaza at the old J.C. Penney's location. Uh, the event will go from 11 to 4, and then directly um, after that will be the tree lighting here from City Hall. 
We'd like to invite everyone out to celebrate Small Business Saturday. Um, make sure you get out to the brick and mortar businesses to shop local and to um, improve those businesses. Uh, there'll be over 30 vendors at the J.C. Penney's location, food trucks, music, Santa, and kids, kids crafts. So please come out. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Communications from the public and petitions. Number one. Notice of claim from Verizon for damages done to a cable allegedly caused when the city of Dunkirk was working on Lucas Avenue on October 22nd, 2019. Uh, seeking a motion to refer this to the law department. First. Councilmember Bamanto with the first. Second. Councilman Civiletta with the second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Bamanto. Aye. Councilmember Heenan. Aye. Councilmember Civiletto. Aye. Councilmember Elijah Washington. Aye. Number two. Notice of claim from Nancy Naparowski for injuries that occurred when she allegedly tripped and fell in front of 625 Central Avenue on October 29, 2019 at approximately 4.30 p.m. Seeking a motion to refer this to the Law Department. First. Councilman Bamanto with the first. Second. Councilman Civiletto with the second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Bamanto. Aye. Councilmember Heenan. Aye. Councilmember Civiletto. Aye. Councilmember Elijah Vawishan. Aye. Number three. Communication from Danny McGill in opposition of resolution 93-2019. Any discussion? Seeking none, this communication will be received and filed. Number four. Communication from Stephen Reese on behalf of Revitalized Dunkirk for permission to provide a hydration station for the benefit of the participants in the annual Memorial Day Parade. Any discussion? Uh, I would just like to thank Mr. Reese and Revitalize Dunkirk for everything that they do, including uh, things of this nature. Hydration station is a great idea um, and can't be overlooked, especially on days like that during the summer. Uh, with that said, this communication will be received and filed. Number seven, reports of standing committees, boards, and commissions. Councilman Bamanto, the floor is yours. Randy, do we have an update on Brigham Road near the steel plant with that situation out there? Yes. <clears throat> We studied that issue with the county bridge engineer uh, and came to the conclusion that we're going to need their help to do that. There are two 36 inch diameter corrugated steel pipes that date back to 1990 that have the bottoms rusted out they have to be replaced. It's going to take a bigger equipment to dig it than what we have. Uh, the mayor ha has uh, interfaced with the steel company um, and we're in the process of negotiating uh, a, a joint project there to both fix that culvert for 300 feet so there's not a dangerous hole. Right now the Jersey barriers protect cars from going into a hole that's quite deep and dangerous. Uh, so they're going to be there over the winter time and then hopefully the bridge crew will help us in the springtime and put those two new culverts in for 300 feet and we'll partner with the steel plant to make the parking lot look good. We'll, that, that whole area has always, we all remember, has never really looked fantastic right. and maybe we can work together and make that whole strip in front of the steel plant look like a really nice parking lot. That, so that's the plan. That's the, that's the reason it looks like that. It's gonna take a lot of work to do together, but I think we have the right team together with the county and the, and the steel company going to work with us to fix that. Okay. You have an update on Crooked Brook? Yeah. The, uh, there were some trees in the creek and Mike Propelia and his crew did a great job to uh, cable those out and pull them out so the obstructions between Route 5 and the mouth of the creek have been removed. Uh, we also put the excavator into the creek at the mouth and lowered as much as we could. We know we have high lake levels, but I'd like to commend Mike and his crew for, for really going the extra <coughs> effort uh, to clear that out. It's, it, it should be pretty well good for the uh, winter season now, but we certainly want to keep an eye on it. Thanks. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Vomato. Councilman Hume. Right. Good evening, Randy. Uh, Randy, could you uh, possibly give us a estimate of the cost of repairing the uh, lake wall? And I'm n nothing else other than doing, the ex doing what's there to have it repaired. The estimate that I submitted with the help of our consulting engineers to the agencies was about $800,000. And uh, I know when I spoke to you at the last meeting, you were having a meeting, I think the next day or so. Any idea when we would possibly get approval um, for the repair of that, if we were approved? I'm sorry, yeah, there was a little bit of static. I didn't I'm sorry, uh, 
when would we be looking for an approval of uh, FEMA or whoever the governing body is for funds for that lake wall? Well, the, this, the, the meeting took place today and was positive. Uh, er, everything that we've heard so far has been, it looks, it looks good in that regard. I think uh, Marcia and Rebecca could speak to what they felt happened today. Do you think it was going as well as can be expected at this point? Um, I've been through similar projects of disasters like, like this, not of this scale, and it, it involves a lot of paperwork. Um, we've got the 77-page report that we had to put in within a week of the disaster happening. We did that, uh, and it, there's going to be a lot more things like that that are involved. Um, it's a, it's a multi-step process. Um, so I think that getting the 800000 to fix the railing part of it should go fairly rapidly. The extra several million dollars to put the mitigation things out there that I spoke to you and I, and I left you off, I'm sure you were involved in the council back around 1999, all of us worked together to have a study made to protect that wall. And we came up with this thing that Presque Isle is, is doing. We've been asking the Corps of Engineers to help us do that for a long time. That project will take longer, but the, I think that the $800,000, in my opinion, will come fairly quickly, Councilman. And the reason I asked Randy is my concern uh, with the 2020 budget. Uh, we have a few more weeks before we have to ratify it, which I believe is December 15th. Yeah. So would we know possibly in the next two weeks? I know you're not a, uh, a genie, but... Uh, if not, I guess, if we don't know within a couple of weeks, then I would ask Marsha and Mr. Woods, uh, what do we do uh, if we don't have it, and if by some reason we do not get it, how that will impact the budget, and should we make room in the budget for whatever cost you think it may be to repair in-house if it comes to that? Yep. Totally. So I guess what would plan B be if plan A certainly doesn't work? I mean, we all hope it does, but... It, then I would certainly be in line with your what you what you outlined as Plan B, for part of Plan A, uh, with with state chips money we were able to put the barricades in for safety, so it's a relatively small amount. We're we're not spending a lot of money right now to keep it safe, but we're doing it we're doing a good job under the advisement of the professionals in safety. Um, so right now we've got it locked down in a, in a safe position with the right signs and things like that. And that's, we can afford to do that. To, if, we had to, if we didn't get the FEMA money to do the next step, as you say, we have to go to plan B, all we'll put our heads together, markets out his checkbook, and we figure it out from there. And, and, and I, you know, I certainly don't want to suggest anything to council, but I would put it out there that we possibly hold off as long as we can if they feel that way uh, to see if we can uh, get an answer before the December 15th. I know we have another meeting uh, in the beginning of December, which I don't think that would be a problem, but uh, I'll leave it at that. If Marsha and Mark have something to say with that, or, or we just we probably should just wait and see what happens first. But I think we should have a plan B and uh, look at that. Uh, I'm glad you brought it up because happen. now I can tell the the people that have been asked this question and help move it along toward her. You know, I, I don't want to push them too hard. And, and, I, and I know there's a lot that DPW yeah. can do, but yeah. if it comes down to replacing things, uh, yeah. then, then there's certainly a cost to it. The, the, the actual labor part of it we can yeah. do uh, and we if, we, if do, we had to. And, and we, uh, we want to do it right. Yeah. And Randy, and this is another uh, budget question that I'll, I'll let you off on this. I know there were uh, five or six jobs uh, that we're looking for the DPW for 912, I believe, for next year. And I believe they're in the budget already. I believe those numbers are there. Uh, do you have a date uh, when you think that between, well, with the mayor, of course, uh, if these jobs would be filled uh, after the first of the year, uh, of course, sometime, but I mean, the first quarter, second quarter, uh, I mean, maybe probably like Parks Department is something you wouldn't need until uh, the spring and you could probably hold off on that. But as far as some of the other jobs uh, within the wastewater treatment plan, so are those something you're looking at filling uh, sometime in the near future? Yes, sir. The uh, mayor's asked me to start looking at, at when I would need somebody. Uh, and, and then he's asked Marsha to look at the current budget to see if we can accelerate the hiring of those. Um, the Parks Division, you would think we wouldn't have to need, but 
Parks Division does a lot of work during the winter time. I don't mean to contradict you. Just no, I, I understand with the plumbing and all. Yes, it, it, it's. The, the, I think the fire chief would agree that his, his driveways and things like that, and the parking lots for the police department. The, the Parks Division does the small plowing, and they do. I, in my opinion, do a very excellent job of that. So it, it may be a may very well be a position that I'd like to fill fairly quickly. I wasn't planning on it snowing at all, uh, but uh, now that you mentioned it, it's probably a good thing. Uh, but I do want to, uh, and I don't want to say the sky is falling, but I am concerned uh, about the project and the lake wall that we do secure that funding because I, it will be a, a problem uh, for us with, with the budget. So uh, anything you can do to try to expedite that, I, I know it's hard to do that, but if there's some way you can, I think that would be great for for all of us to have that information. So. We'll, we'll do. Totally Thank you, sir. Totally I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. All that. What's that? Thank you, Councilman Heener. Councilman Civiletto. I uh, just want to announce the Public Safety Committee meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock in the Mayor's Conference Room. That's it. Thank you, Councilman Civiletto. Uh, I will start with uh, Mr. McGill's questions for our City Attorney. Uh, he had four questions that he was seeking answers to. Um, how was the cable agreement negotiated? Um, was there any input from the public? Uh, is there still a cable board? And why 15 years and not 10? So just to, by way of the process, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. McGill and all the other folks who were uh, with him on the previous contract was negotiated uh, because essentially that made our job a lot easier this time around. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to change, uh, A, because most of the contract is dictated by state and federal law. The FCC and the PSC, uh, New York State Public Service Commission, and the Federal Communications Commission control most of what happens with the cable franchise agreements. The municipalities traditionally have had some say in terms of extracting some public benefit, the uh, PEG stations, the public uh, access stations, and what have you. We have that in place. Um, under the current administration, federally, uh, the FCC has, has sent out uh, statements basically saying that they're limiting what we could have extracted uh, in terms of public or benefits or in-kind benefits from the cable companies. Uh, so there wasn't a whole lot more we could get, essentially. So there wasn't a whole lot to negotiate. Uh, the other issue, too, is that Spectrum essentially has a monopoly in this area, uh, much like its predecessor cable operators. So we didn't have to go through any kind of uh, RFP process because essentially there's nobody else around. Uh, in terms of cable rates, one issue that everybody obviously would like to have a say in, again, the, F, the Public Service Commission establishes those rates. And I believe part of Spectrum's agreement to stay in New York State, I know there was some issues there with the Cuomo administration, uh, was that rates were reset. And they were allowed to raise rates uh, somewhat again. Uh, the other issue too is that if we, uh, tried to extract more and we couldn't get the in-kind services out like you could traditionally, that would have just gone to our cable bills. There's that peg line, it's one of those lines on the cable bill and they would have just passed on that cost. Uh, used to be they would eat some of that, but that's no longer the case. Uh, in terms of the cable board, it is still alive, but I think it's on life support. Uh, frankly, it, it, some of the people are, um, have since their terms have expired. There's some people new to the board but it, it hasn't been functional. I think part of that, Mr. McGill, is because uh, there was nothing for the board to negotiate or work on from several years. Uh, once that last contract expired, it's like when a lease expires, you just go with what was. Uh, and so everything was pretty much hunky-dory, and in the two and a half years I've been here, we haven't had a public outcry for any issues with Spectrum Service. Uh, the last thing I'll say to that is also just the world's changed a lot, uh, and now in 2019, cable companies are more and more becoming utility companies, much like electric and gas, in the sense that their lines run the internet, but in terms of providers and what people watch, more and more people are cutting the cord. So it's less about cable TV, and it's more about uh, Wi-Fi and internet connection for streaming services, online content, that most folks under the age of 30 are now watching on their telephones or on a tablet or on their gaming systems. I can tell you with a 19 and 15 year old at home, they don't watch TV anymore. So TV is less of an issue than it used to be. Uh, it's just the world's changing. 
Um, so with that, there wasn't a whole lot for us to negotiate. I handled most of the negotiations with input from the mayor, with input from the public access crew, with Vicki Westling, who's part of the public access crew, and I believe she's also a current board member of the cable station. Okay. And it was a relatively straightforward process. So there wasn't a, a, a huge need to have meetings because there wasn't a whole lot of terms we could negotiate. Okay, thank you for your explanation, Richard. I never thought I'd hear the term hunky-dory slid into a meeting quite as well as you just did. <laughs> um, Randy, would you like to address Ms. Nichols' question about the Christmas lights down Lakeshore Drive, if we have enough, what the plan is, how many we have, availability, electric, electricity, and so forth? Sure. I think it's a, use that phrase, great idea. Um, the, uh, uh, I apologize for not having thought of it before um, the holiday season is upon us because it takes a little bit of work to negotiate with National Grid. The, uh, on, on the poles that have the fixtures, there's a, there's a courtesy outlet on those poles and I, I offhand don't know if those poles have that. If they do, then it's a relatively fast track to try to order some fixtures and get them up there. I think it's a great idea. Uh, the uh, mayor would like the budget to have American flags not stop at Lucas Avenue on Central Avenue, go all the way to Miller Fillmore, whatever. I think they make a great entrance to the city. So the same sort of thing with those Christmas decorations. They, I, it, it should go east and west in my personal opinion, and I will do everything I can to make that happen. Thank you, Randy. Um, Rebecca? I, as far as the break wall is concerned and the $800,000 that Randy is speaking of, I know for four years I've been asking for lights on top of the break wall and now that we don't have a break wall basically anymore or a cap to it, I'm sure all that electric is shot now too. If there is a possibility when we're rebuilding it, if maybe we can slide that into the rebuild as well, then that would be great. Good idea. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. It would be perfect timing. So. Yeah just wanted to remind you about that and just so the public is aware and Randy please correct me if I am wrong um, when you're speaking of the breakwaters such as those as Presque Isle it serves multi-purposes obviously it, it stops the waves from getting all the way to Lakefront mm -hmm. Boulevard and mm -hmm. causing damage and things of that nature and eroding our beaches but on the flip side of that like Presque Isle Beach as well because the, the water is less turbulent the beaches grow in size as well is that correct it's been my dream to have Lakeshore Boulevard look like the Pacific Coast Highway from Main Street all the way to Wright Park. And uh, I think that it would all be sand, it wouldn't move, we could clean it up, it'd be great. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. So I just wanted to make the public aware of that as well, is that the breakwaters do serve multi-purpose and then our beaches should possibly grow, like the beach that grew underneath the catwalk years ago, which used to be water as well. Um, it's not going to happen overnight if that does happen. Even if we get the breakwaters put in, it's going to take years and years to yeah. build the beaches up, but that's another added bonus as well of the breakwaters. So I just wanted to make the public as aware of that as well because that's never been mentioned. Um, Mr. Heenan just approached me. He forgot one of his questions. Life preservers at the pier? An update on that, Rebecca? Yes, I put in a grant application with Chautauqua County for, uh, they, they have funding through uh, <coughs> the bed tax for water improvement projects. So we asked for life preservers at the pier for some additional uh, picnic tables under the new shaded structure that's at the pier, as well as uh, some cool large scale games to go in the grass areas and some Adirondack chairs to, to really liven up the pier. So um, yes, I did include those life preservers, yes. Okay, thank you, Rebecca. Um, last thing I have, Mayor, I know me and you earlier this year have agreed to a disagree on um, our takes on the repair of the docks at the Chadwick Bay Marina. Um, as the lease says, I believe that the city is not responsible for the repair of the docks, but um, there was some done and that's what we agree to disagree on. But um, because of the storms that we've had and our, our harbor now freezes versus stays thawed due to energy being shut down over the years, and I see now that um, a lot of the docks are left in very late into the season where before they used to be entirely pulled out for the season, 
any damage that occurs from these recent storms and or over the winter since the precedent has been set by having some city employees down there repairing those, are we on the hook come springtime to repair any of those docks that were damaged with the storms? Because there is damaged docks down there. To answer your question, I believe that we are not. All of that would be in the agreement and the attorney would have to take a look at that. Okay. I'm just nervous that we may have set a precedent by helping him out one time and now the expectation might be there again in the future, especially after storms and winters that we just had. Well, we're not even into winter yet, but there's enough damage down there already. So, okay, thank you. Um, and also, uh, last meeting before Thanksgiving, uh, I would also like to wish everybody a happy and safe Thanksgiving, especially if you're traveling. And um, hopefully you enjoy your time with your family and your meals. That is all I have. Uh, number eight, unfinished business. <clears throat> there is no unfinished business. Number nine, pre-filed resolutions. Uh, number 97. Resolution for submission of fiscal year 2018 consolidated annual performance and evaluation report for City of Dunkirk CDBG pro program to HUD. Any discussion, Council? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Bamanto? Aye. Council Member Heenan? Aye. Council Member Civiletto? Aye. Council Member at Large Bush? Aye. Number 98. 98. Resolution for approval of New York State DEC grant application for urban forestry tree maintenance program. Any discussion, Council? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Bumanto? Aye. Council Member Heenan? Aye. Council Member Civiletto? Aye. Council Member at Large Wawesh? Aye. Number 99. Resolution authorizing shared services agreement extensions, police services, town of Dunkirk. Any discussion, Council? Clerk call the roll. Council Member Bamanto? Aye. Council Member Heenan? Aye. Council Member Civiletto? Aye. Council Member at Large Bawash? Aye. Number 10, new business. Any walk ins or surprises? Nothing this evening. Number 11, adjournment. Motion to adjourn? First. Councilman Bamanto with the first. Second. Councilman Heenan with the second. Clerk call the roll. Council Member Bamanto? Aye. Council Member Heenan? Council Member Civiletto? Aye. Council Member at Large Bawash? Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> 607. 607.